The mile to Tinkan Akpapa Expressway in Lagos, Nigeria is again motorable after over 12 years of unimaginable hideous gridlock. What we did was simply to improve collaboration between the Nigerian Post Authority and other stakeholders. So first of all, we engaged the truckers and uh, other users of the port corridor and then we reached out to Lagos State Government. The support from Lagos State Government tremendously helped us to achieve this. The road houses two of Nigeria's busiest seaports, the Tinkan Island Port and the Lagos Port Complex, also known as Akpapa Port. The Port Corridor is also a major hub for tank farms distributing petroleum products. Port Corridor is defined to be the areas between Mile 2 and the um, Tinkan Island Port, First Gate, Second Gate, Liverpool Bridge, down to the Creek Road and the Seaplane area, up to the Wharf Gate. And then on the Ijora flank, you have it from the bridge, the Orile Gomu Bridge, down to Ijora Seafax, up to Danlami Area B, Wharf Road, and to the Wharf Gate. Um, uh, predominantly, those are the two major arteries into the port. But then, chaos took over and the resultant effect was that the cost of doing business at both seaports hit the roof. For every human problem, there are human elements to them. And for every environmental problem, you have human elements. So the first thing that we did was to uh, get stakeholders buy in get stakeholders to join us in identifying the problems. There were a lot of encroachments, illegal shanties, illegal activities along the port corridor, and we ensured that those, was, those ones were cleared. So if you park your truck along the way, first of all, there's nowhere for you to eat almost immediately, because formerly you have food stalls, illegal food stalls, from the beginning of the road to the end of it. That's no more there. We have provided and we are providing more uh, toilet facilities for the truck uh, owners. But then we also have two trucks that were ready to take away any truck that parks illegally and we keep sustaining that. In a day we can spend, uh, if we, with one container we can spend three days on the road. We will carry our generator to power because we are carrying the perishable goods. So we have to power, 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 power till our diesel finish. We will have to call again. Please, our diesel finish, oh, come and give us, oh, they will give us another diesel. Sometimes we use three days, sometimes we use two days. Sometimes we will be lucky, maybe that same day. But now, we move one in the morning and this is another one in the evening. During the time of the gridlock, we can spend two weeks without having have a way to the port. And when a cargo spends two weeks on the road, it is only 10 days the shipping company gives to us. There is no how you not miss the vessel. No how you not miss the vessel. Because the, do the truck on the road is already blocked. Even if you have a genuine document, you have done everything. When the one in the front have blocked you, there is no how you can get into the port. Pockets of silo efforts to restore sanctity to the route failed, but the Nigerian government was determined industry collaboration worked. We did a lot of enlightenment campaign. We put a deadline to it. That's the major thing. We put a deadline to the fact that uh, we give them about four days to remove their trucks and tankers from the road. The Nigerian Ports Authority initiated the electronic call-up system and truck transit parks. The advocacy, sustained advocacy, for people to be able to operate within the provisions of uh, electronic call-up system, which uh, is the fulcrum for which the traffic management is actually rested. You must do an auto booking for you to come in. It's either you're coming in to pick you know, a container or you're coming in to drop a leading uh, airport. So we have an SOP that if you want to come in, you must go and do your auto booking, which is online and then you make your payment and then your access is given to you because we have the access gates into the port and it will only open if you have a booking tied to that truck number. We the ETO staff at the gates, what we do, we make sure that as they are coming, all their documents are, are, are all okay. 
Like for instance now, as they're coming with their call up, we make sure that the truck that I'm seeing before me is what is also on the Edso call up. Like the plate, make sure their plate number, one of the documents, their plate number, make sure that the container number tallies. The Port Authority, in collaboration with the Lagos State Government, Nigerian Customs Service, the Nigerian Police and other critical stakeholders and road users found a lasting solution to the dreaded traffic congestion. It's cheaper to rent trucks now uh, that will take in cargo or bring it out. You understand that's one. Two, it means we are more efficient. It also means cargo dwell time will reduce. It means more revenue for government. It means reduction in wastages. So it's not just about MPA. It also affects the national economy. When we talk about competitiveness for business, it starts with this. The first thing none is that reporting those to international community will give them greater confidence that the ease of doing business that we are trying to achieve, the effort being made through our various engagement with the stakeholders is yielding result. We have driven away everyone who has no business being on their road. And there is a partnership with the truckers too, that they should maintain a delegated lane so that there will be free flow of traffic. Within the port corridor, security-wise, it's been calm. We are not relenting on our hours. We work day and night. You know, it's the gateway to the nation's economy. The stakes are very high. And the police, in conjunction with security agencies, we have upped our game. 